Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available whenever you get your podcast, including YouTube, um, wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis from the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, and I'm joined by Demarcus Lodge, Ole Miss legend Demarcus Lodge. I mean, I literally have his poster sitting right over my right shoulder. Uh, how you doing, man? Man, doing pretty good, man. Just just taking it day by day. How about yourself? Pretty good. Is how's the weather? You look like you're bundled up a little bit. Is there a cold snap coming through the south? Yeah, uh, we getting a little rain and a little wind. Um, and I'm a very I, I think I'm anemic, man. I haven't went to the doctor and got <laughs> you know diagnosed with that, but I think I'm pretty anemic. So any little breeze would get me. But we getting a little rain down this way. Yeah, I'm down here in um, Central Florida, so if it gets down in the mid 60s, I'm cold. So I, I get it. Yeah, that's that's me, man. A, a little <laughs> breeze of wind, uh, my body's chilling all day. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, spring practice has started. The last time we talked to you was before spring practice, but it is starting right now. Um, any thoughts or impressions going into where we are right now? Man, uh, I'm I'm ready to get up there. I get to see it next week. Um, I'll probably be up there for about three or four days next week. Uh, but I'm excited to see the defense. I've been seeing a lot of new things um, all across the Internet saying that our defense looks totally different. I know we brought in some heck of a playmakers and Walter Nolan, um, the other D lineman from Florida. I don't want to say his name wrong. Is it Princely or? or... Princely and Monmi Ellen. Yep, Princey. Um, and then we got the linebacker from Arkansas, man. We we got DBs everywhere. Brandon Turnage um, has finally made his way back home, which right. is nice. Um, so I'm ready to see the defense. I know what we got on offense and what those guys can do, but I'm ready to see a, a official elite defense out of this. One really cool thing, if you're talking about the clips that come out on the internet, is um, George McDonald, the wide receivers coach there, is doing like little clips after every practice of, them working out and Trey Harris catching passes and Jordan Watkins doing individual drills like that. A, I like the energy of the drills. Those are very well edited and everything, but it just reminds me that this wide receiver room has a chance to be really, really good moving forward. Man, I, I would agree with that. I'm I'm not too um, well versed with um, with coach, but I've heard a lot of great things about him. Uh, I know he knows what he's doing down in that receiver room. A lot of our fans and, and boosters and everything were pretty excited when he got hired. So I can't wait to actually see him in, in action, you know, um, outside of just the clips to see what he's instilling in these guys. And, I mean, he got the group to to be the best in the country. I think we are, but we still have to go out and prove that. But, man, I'm, I'm excited to see those guys. Yeah, it's led by Trey Harris, and he's the dude. And before we get started, I want to know your opinion. In the new college football game, Trey Harris Friday – opted into the um, NCAA football video game, what should his rating be? Oh, just going off of, of what we've seen from him last year, man, I'm going I'm to have to go with a strong 91, 92 right now. Okay. And how good of a wide receiver, like your wide receiver unit is the bar. The, that group you were with, that is the bar. How good can Trey Harris be and how good can this wide receiver unit be? Oh, man, I think he can be – he's great now. I think he can be light years, you know, greater than what he is. Um, he's very consistent, man. Um, you can see that in day in and day out. Even last year, just showing up when a, when his name was called, I think he's he's a very consistent guy, and that's what it takes to be great, you know, doing the good things over and over again. You can also tell he he loves the young guys and want to bring everybody with him. It's not just his show and, and him want to be great. He wants the whole room to be great. But I think his ceiling is, is way higher than we all know, man. Um, I heard – I've seen him been getting some work in the offseason, but I think Trey's going to be great for us, man. Um, like I said, he's a big guy. He's going to get the 50-50 ball. Um, he's going to stretch the field. But he can also get in there inside and run a dig, take a hit, uh, get dirty. But I think, man, the only thing that will stop Trey is Trey. If he just show up every day and consistently get better um, – grow confidence, more confidence in the offense and dark and just let it ride out. I think he's going to be, you know, amongst the top five to ten guys to, to play in that room. 
You know what I think he – the one thing that he really needs to work on? While you're in Oxford next week, you need to go back there and just work with him on the back shoulder. Because I don't know if I saw anybody that ran the back shoulder fade pattern better than Demarcus Lodge when he was at Ole Miss. <laughs> man, it's, it's, it's a skill, man. Um, hmm. It's definitely something that you have to work on that don't just come to you. Uh, but I made a, a living off of that back shoulder, man. Hmm. Uh, you know, you get guys draped all over you in the SEC. You know, they're just as fast, they're just as strong. So being able to have that mobility in the hips, and that's all it is, uh, mobility in the hips, being able to stop on a dime and turn your body all at once. Uh, that jug machine will help them out a lot, man, with the concentration. But I definitely get up there and, and try to work with them on that a lot, uh, the whole group. <laughs> Yeah, um, because Jackson Dart and Trey Harris, you saw that last season. The back shoulder was becoming more and more of a, a threat. And and Trey has the athleticism and the body to make that an absolute weapon, like a college version of Megatron, essentially. Because mm -hmm. you can't you, you typically you can't guard it, man. Mm -hmm. Once the ball is put, you know, behind the, the cornerback's head and he has to totally stop and try to turn around and find it while not even knowing the ball is thrown. It's one of the hardest things to guard, in my opinion, man. So if you perfect that, I think you can just, anytime you need a first down on third and whatever, just give him back shoulder, go to that single receiver. You know you got him, he's going to catch the ball. So give him a chance. Okay. Going to put you on the spot. We're going to do memory lane because we do this with former players every time they come on the show. Hey. And – the question is, I want you to rank the wide receiver room in 2018. Ooh, 2018, was that? That's Elijah as a freshman. Okay, oh, that's that's tough, man. Uh, okay, all right, I'll go with, obviously I got to go with me with number one. Uh, <laughs> but if we're going to go realistically, I'll put um, – AJ Brown won. Um, just because DK didn't have a full, you know, two, three years to actually play, he'd battle with a lot of injuries. I'm gonna have to go number number two with me. Um mm -hmm. three DK, I think four Elijah. Oh man, and that that last spot. Oh, that's pretty tough, man. I'm trying to think of, of all the rest of the guys we had in that room. Um, dang, man. Um, I don't know, man. That's that, that five spot is pretty high, hard, man. Yeah. Well, um, going back to like DeMaurier Stringfellow, whenever he played at Ole Miss, going back to that group, rank the receivers that you actually played with. Okay. All right. Now, now we're talking. All right. Um, if I had me personally, my personal opinion, number one would be Van Jefferson. Um, back back in those days, then I would have to go with just for what all he's done and his athletic ability at the time, just being able to play big boy ball over the field. I'm going to go to Coin Treadwell. Um, I take Quincy out of Boy Joe at three. Um, dang, I'll take me at four. And I got a year with Cody Core, so I'm gonna have to go Cody Core at, at five. Nice. Okay, that's a solid look. Now, okay, we're going to talk about quarterbacks now. Rank the quarterbacks that you played with. Oh, so I played with Chad, Shea, and Jordan. Mm -hmm. Definitely Chad's number one. I'll, I'll, I don't think anybody's going to top Chad in, in my book um, for number one. So Chad, number one. Um, dang, that number two spot is hard, man. I probably have to go Shea, even though I didn't get to play much with him and he ended up transferring out and um, essentially got a spot to. But I think Shea just had a, a unbelievable talent that he didn't get to reach the full potential of at Ole Miss. He could spin the ball, put it anywhere on the field. Um, he was athletic. I think he could make every throw from any angle. Um, but he was just so worried when he first came in about the big play and not taking what the defense gave him. Uh, so I'm going to go Shea number two and then Jordan number three. All right. And just real quick, um, have you been to any baseball games this spring? Uh, I've been to a couple early on, man. Um, unfortunately, the ones that we we did not win. But uh, <laughs> I see we've been picking it up a little bit. I'm excited to to get to more of them and actually learn the game. 
Uh, that's what I've kind of been in that learning phase over the last couple of weeks or so. Uh, but I seen we one of our football guys was out there, got his first couple pitches, man. And should I've seen him throw the ball, the football, so I can just only imagine what he do with that baseball. Yeah, um, I have it on pretty good authority. When he throws a four-seam fastball with a baseball, it's 98 miles an hour. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And a left-hander throwing that hard, as much as he can throw a football and as, as much talent as he has, throwing that hard from the left-hand side, it, it just makes me think it's like – Baseball, baseball. <laughs> yeah, that's bro, that's crazy because I wonder, does it work like this with baseball? Because I know in football, a lefty quarterback, the ball spins the opposite way. So it's a little harder catching a lefty's ball as a receiver because the laces spin a different way, just a whole lot of play into it. Is that the same with, with baseball? Like, I, th I think so. You have a situation where hitting lefties, there's always a little bit more different than hitting righties. And a lot of that could be from the area, the zone that it's being thrown from. Um, but it also spins like opposite. It's like um, the toilet bowl in Australia where the water spins the different way. Yeah, it probably kind of mm. looks like for the right-hand batters, it probably looks like the ball is coming right to them every time. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it seems to be pretty interesting. Right, anyway, you watching the NCAA tournament right now? I got to catch a couple games yesterday. Um as bad as I hate to say it, I want to state to win that game yesterday just um, just to, to have some Mississippi, you know, getting down through there. Um, but, yeah, I watched a couple games, man. We're starting off strong. I, I can't wait to, to our girls get out there and, and compete, man. Yeah, and whenever this video year airs, um, Coach Yo's team would have played yesterday. Um, but they get Marquette. They had Marquette in the first round, and if they win that game. They're likely going to get to play Notre Dame. That, that's the way that's going to play out, I think. Oh, okay, okay, man. Mm -hmm. I love Coach Yo and what she's mm -hmm. done with those girls. And I think this is the first time I've I seen a video of uh, Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce talking about this, and it's so true. This is the first time, I think, in a long time that I think everybody is more interested with women's basketball right now than than men's i can't name you the top 10 college basketball players right now but i can go down a list of girls man this is the first year that i can remember that i did not fill out a bracket oh yeah <laughs> that's tough man this, this is it's like uh I, and believe it or not i've gotten so much time back not worried about it. it's like okay what's my record for today and all that yeah and yeah, it's pretty good. I got to, I got to take a little bit of a nap on the on the Thursday of the tournament. Yeah, it was pretty great. <laughs> hey, less stress. I feel that. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, Demarcus, thank you so much for coming on the show, and thanks to everybody for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Demarcus Lodge is going to be in Oxford. Next week, we're hopefully going to get him back on the show. I'm going to put him on the spot right now, back on the show after he goes up there and visits and gets an idea of what practice looks like. Oh, uh, you for sure will, bro, because uh, I, I can't wait to see it, and I can't wait to tell it for the people who, you know, can't get into those practices or aren't keeping up with it online. I, I can't wait to, to see it and tell it, man, because I'm excited about this year. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, me, me too. And 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 thank you so much for coming on the show. And Demarcus, man, you're a legend, Ole Miss legend. And like I said, you're on the wall. Man, I appreciate that. I, I, it's good to hear those words, man. And mm -hmm. thanks for having me as well. All right. Take care, buddy. All right. You have a good one.